Welcome to the Sun and Fun 2021 Quick Take Episodes. All right, here at Sun and Fun 2021 at the Dynon booth, Fly Dynon, with Robert Hamilton. And we'll give a kind of a quick tour of how to operate one of these Dynon HDX panels. All right, Robert, like I said, if um, I'm a brand new person to Dynon here, right? And I've never even touched one of these, these screens. Uh, walk us through like the home page, what's available on the home page. Um, is it customizable? And I see you've got many buttons. I, I assume you've got several pages to scroll through. So just kind of walk us through what it's like to operate one of these. Okay, thanks, Brian. So what we have here is a completely integrated, what we call a glass panel. It has, it's all the avionics you need to aviate, communicate, and navigate. Uh, this is the primary display right here with your primary flight display. It has your, all your six pack of, of information. It has your attitude. I'm going to do a turn here so you, you can see the attitude is changing. Airspeed, altimeter, vertical speed, compass, uh, uh, bank and turn. Everything that you're used to traditionally is right here to fly the airplane. On this particular screen, we're also showing all the engine instruments here. One thing to know though that these two displays that you see are actually identical, even though this one is now set up for the GPS navigation display. I can easily reach over here and hit display. I can turn on my map. Um, let me go here. I'm going to go. Here we go. Primary flight display. And so. Again, these two are identical, it just depends on how you want to set it up for what you want in front of you and in front of the co-pilot and for good efficient cockpit management. Again, I can go back here and I can turn on the engine as well. Um, and there's different ways I can set it up. I can put the uh, engine instruments across the right or underneath as on this display totally up to you as the as the pilot on how you want things set up. Is there like a, a several predetermined layouts that you can kind of scroll through that is like completely open or kind of like quadrants or? Well yes there are de cer certain defined. We have a full screen here and then half screens and then the bottom screen. So there are, you know, it's not infinite varieties, but you have a lot of flexibility. And if you go deep into the setup menu, there's other changes like all the engine uh, instruments you can change uh, as a experimental aircraft uh, builder. You can set up these displays to look any way you like, whether bar graphs or columns or um, dial. Um, displays that's all customizable in our certified uh, um, uh, setups it's a little different it's exactly the same hardware but the software is more tied down the user interface is more tied down you still have the option of switching displays but there's fewer options as far as how everything is displayed okay so let's assume for a second that a customer or myself have only purchased one screen how would you navigate through that to see everything okay. versus going back and forth well, to two screens? To, to this display. So right now I have my primary flight display and my engine instruments. So I just press uh, display, I hit map, and now I have all three on one 10 inch screen. And as you can see, it's uh, 10 inches is still a, a lot of room um, compared to older analog instruments, for example. Uh, so this is uh, there's a lot of information on this one. It's a little bit cluttered. You might want to clean it up. But it has all your weather information, all your navigation, airport information, everything you need to navigate here, all your engine instruments, and again, all your primary flight display here. Let me point out one thing in particular. Uh, we, we, uh, we were the first on the market uh, with uh, touch screens for uh, EFIS type system like this. Um, at least for in this in this marketplace uh, for, for experimental, and you can see we love having touch screens. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can pick an airport, you can pick airspace, find out everything you want to know about that. It, it's almost a necessity because everybody's so used to touch screen. People go to like, is yeah. it broken? Is, is it not working? Yes, but there is a problem with it. Um, 
When you're using a, like a iPad, for example, it's typically on your knee and it's moving with you and it's right here where you, you're kind of close coupled to it. Uh, when you're out here, your arm is outstretched a little bit and it can be, you know, aircrafts Riding right some yeah. thermals or whatnot. Yeah, right. So we do a couple things for you. One is we have hand grips everywhere, including on the bottom ledge. So you can grab the bottom and use your thumb, and now your hand is coupled right to the display. And it's very easy to move around and to touch uh, various. Yeah, I, I feel you actually textured the edges of the screen too. Yep. So you want a nice solid grip on where you are. And then the second thing is, we always give you buttons. You don't have to touch things. Uh, everything, all the controls are down here, and I can pick what I want uh, without having to go up to the for airport information, for example. I could go to the display and touch it, or I can go down here and push a button, and now I have all the various information right here at my fingertips. Um, so, so you've got eight buttons down below, uh, what are they for? So again, there are the, those are the hard buttons which do the same thing as uh, the d display does um, in most cases, um, but in this case, so let me just show you one thing, right? Right down here we have a button that I can zoom in and out on the geo-reference maps, or I can go in here. So your choice. So to some level, these duplicate what you can do with your, your fingers on the display. One thing we try to do that is keep the menu structure as absolutely flat as possible. Uh, I think our maximum uh, in-flight menu is, is, most often it's one or two levels, that the most is three which uh, is, a, is huge. You, you, know, you don't want to be hunting while you're flying. You don't want to be hunting. We try to make things just as absolutely intuitive and as top level as possible. Yeah. So that's your primary flight display. There's other ways that we try to uh, make things easy as well. For example, if I touch info, we know we have all the communication frequencies and navigation frequencies for, for an airport, for example. It's in the database. So why would you possibly have to go over here and dial all that information into your comm radio? So let me show you this. I can dial in a frequency, just the old traditional way of doing it, but nowadays there's just no reason to do it. Let's say I'm flying to an airport, I can hit the ATIS button, it knows that we're flying to, in this case, Payne Field, K-P-A-E, I can hit ATIS, and it automatically will tune the ATIS here. I can put it into my active window. I can listen to ATIS. When I have the information, I can then hit air traffic control and get my approach frequency. Talking to the, to the airport, they'll pass me off to tower. They'll tell me what frequency to, to switch to, but rather than me having to dial it in, it, it in and maybe get it wrong, I just press tower and I can see and I can you know, confirm with what they told me to make sure that's the same thing as here. So, so with that feature, correct me if I'm wrong, that would uh, keep you from having to, let's say, populate a screen before you're traveling with five or six different frequencies. If you're going in route, you literally hit a button and it gives you that information. Yeah, in fact, if you're in route, uh, one way to do it is you hit the airport button and it will give you the nearest airport and you can then actually dial out to see one that maybe uh, is big enough to have all the, all the weather information exact, for, for example. And there's other ways we even make it even simpler. Um, let's say you're going along and you, you want to set your barometric pressure. You could listen to the radio, find the, the right you know, airport, get the frequency, or you can reach over here to barrel, hold that button in, and again, it has the database. It will go find the nearest airport that has a barometric, you know, AWOS, ASOS. Grab that data and update your, your barrel number just by holding that button in, in route. We try to make the user interface just as intuitive and quick as possible. And that's, uh, that's the type of stuff that we do here. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics, Airworks, AirTech Coatings, these sponsors make all of this original aviation content possible. So I invite you after this video to check out the links below and say hello to our sponsors. Tell them you found them here on the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Robert, so uh, 
obviously having either two screens or one screen, you can get all the information in one place, as you're, you're telling us here. Um, obviously, it's, it's nice to have two. You can have keep things up and bigger display. Um, explain how the, the moving map works. Is it your own? Is it a third party? And also, whether and how, where does it get the information? Is it a subscription? Yep. Explain that whole process. Okay, um, excellent. So, yes, this is our map. Um, there's various layers of information here. The most obvious thing here you see is the geographic. So there's elevations. Uh, that doesn't change much. It gets it ships with the uh, high, a very high resolution um, geographics. Ships with the instrument. If it ever were to change, you can download it free from our from our web, website. It's fairly easy to load. So that's the most obvious thing here. And what you can see here is quite traditional. So, so just to, so it's kind of like a lifetime subscription to uh, the maps, yeah, kind of like. All free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can see that the different color markings, the greenish or browns, are is land that's beneath you. The yellow is within 2,000 feet, and the red that's um, under you. So obviously, uh, it's pretty intuitive. You want to stay away from the red. Um, as you climb, you can see the red disappear. That's pretty traditional with most GPS maps. So then we go from there. Um, oh, the, the simulation just reset itself. So now we're back on the ground. So of course, there's a lot more red because the airplane uh, is a lot lower. Uh, of course, we get things like TFR, T, TFRs, which you can well, see. I was making sure that wasn't lava there for yeah, a second. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the next layer is all the, um, uh, the data like roads and cities and such. That also we just provide to you. Uh, it doesn't update very often. It's just there. The next layer that does change is the airports and obstacles. Traditionally, they, they were updated by the FAA every 28 days. Regardless, we always have it on our website. It would take just a minute on your computer, download it to a, a card, plug it in, and you can upload to the most current FAA data. Again, that's free. We buy it from the FAA. It's not much. We pass it along to you for free. Um, the next layer is all the weather information and of course that also is free that comes from the ADSB system and just is superimposed on on the map um, the next thing is let me go to an airport information uh, this is my home air airport Painfield Snohomish County and we um, we have plates and diagrams so this is for example a geo referenced airport diagram this and as well as your approach plates for IFR instrument landings we do charge for that actually we don't charge for it there's third parties that provide it uh, most often in the United States the best source is Seattle Avionics which has all the all the US plates for it actually for for um, more than the US um, then they keep expanding what what they're offering. It's, it's been some time since I've bought an airport directory, which used to be like a yep. like a brown leather type booklet, yep. and th that's a hardback. So I assume digital is probably cheaper. It has all, the, it has all that information, and the um, uh, Seattle Avionics offers a subscription for ninety nine dollars a year, so it's very reasonable. Outside the U S, we have other. Uh, vendors that provide that data for us, Pocket FMS, uh, Australia, it's Oz Runways. We have a new vendor for South America, so we have all the South American data now. Um, so, you, wherever you are, we have data for you. That does cost a little bit, but in a variety of ways with our contracts, we keep the price as absolutely low cost as possible. You know this this glass panel stuff. It's all inclusive, right? So it includes your your transponder, ADSB, and ev everything in one space. That's absolutely right. Including things that traditionally cost a whole lot more, such as autopilots. I mean, on a certified plane, you can spend twenty thousand dollars easily on an autopilot, where we include it in the system itself. Let me show you our autopilot. Basically, I'll click on autopilot. You have all the displays here. Now again, we use both touchscreen and we have a separate panel if you'd rather use it that way with, with hard buttons. But I can turn the autopilot on. It's now telling me that the autopilot is on. 
I'm in roll mode, vertical speed mode, and I want to increase my vertical speed, so I'll go up to 500 feet per minute. It will now capture whatever, uh, it will actually, in this case, it will just keep going, uh, but I can also put a um, altitude hold in, dial in my, um, my altitude I want to go to, very advanced modern autopilot. It has all the all the roll commands, all the the um, the uh, um, altitude hold, vertical speed hold, um, airspeed hold. Basically, all the, the all the features that any modern autopilot has. Um, now, most airplanes that we sell, we have two axes: the roll and the pitch. But if your airplane needs it, we also have a yaw damper. Um, depending on like a high wing airplane might might need it um, so we offer everything so that's the autopilot and then we also have a transponder it's totally integrated let me reach up here and touch the transponder so you can dial in your frequencies I can hit ident as need be right now I'm doing VFR or I can put in a uh, uh, air traffic control frequency that they tell me to and just that simple so again everything's integrated it keeps your panel clean now one thing is it might be hey you have an integrated panel doesn't that mean that if there's one failure everything goes away it's actually not true everything is real is a redundant here as I showed you earlier both screens are actually the same hardware if you lost one the other becomes the, the primary. Okay, so you don't lose any functionality if you lose a display. Uh, uh, talking about the wiring, the data communications, they're all redundant. So if you had any fault in any of the wiring, it, it knows it, it uh, disregards that com, rate, that com um, data ca cable, goes to the other one. So in this situation to like computer talk for a second, there is no real um, master slave. One kind of acts as one, but one might take a, a, the second seat or back seat to it, but they're both masters. Yeah, interesting question. As a, if you're a computer geek, there actually is a primary and a secondary, uh, but the pilot would never know which one. Uh, it chooses when you when you power it on, one of them becomes primary, but operationally it makes absolutely no different. And if the primary goes down, the, the secondary becomes the primary, just like that. And so everything is synchronized. So if I change a heading over here, the, the heading changes over on the second screen as well. Everything is shared back and forth. If I change the barrel on one, the barrel changes on the other. Is there any audible warnings or notifications built into it? And can you change the voice? Because like, could I, could I have you do a voiceover for my system and have your voice on it? Yeah, good question. Um, we, we don't actually allow you to do your custom voice, but we do have audio. Uh, we have both a warning system here that's visual and um, audio that has a... Uh, um, terrain, terrain. Exactly, exactly. I got taller or something. <laughs> All right, Robert, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your day today to walk us through the operation of the HDX panels, right? And I uh, hope you have a good week here at Sun and Fun. We will, and thank you, Brian. It's been great so far, and we're looking forward to a really good week. So thank you, and, and good luck with you. There's a lot of good things to see around here. Uh, where can people get a hold of you to call you directly or read about information online and that kind of stuff? Again, the simplest way is just on our website, dynon.aero is the, the, the shortest and quickest way to reach us. Awesome. All right. Thanks for the uh, tour today. Thank you very much, Brian. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out our brand new website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.